Hello, 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 Virgo. I am Poetic Heretic, and this is your September 2020 astrology forecast, where we take a look at the most significant astrological developments of the month and interpret them for your sign. Now, this month we are doing things a little bit differently, in that rather than my having a written report in front of me, I am instead interpreting each chart, each aspect in real time. So that should be interesting. Also, as always, I want to remind you that videos like this will always be most accurate for your rising sign. So I highly recommend using these primarily for your rising sign, but you can also use them for your sun and or moon sign if you would like to. So with that said, let us begin. First, we are looking at a chart here for the very end of the month. Now, the reason that we're looking at the end of the month first is because that is when an aspect perfects that we must very much understand before we can understand the rest of the month in the context of it. And that is, of course, the Mars-Saturn square. Now, those of you who saw my forecast last month may recall my describing this Mars extended stay in Aries. Um, which it will be in for basically about five, six months. And that is because it goes retrograde through Aries and then turns direct and, you know, ends up uh, spending so much more time than it normally would in one sign. And that is uh, here in Aries. Well, here in September, we have a most difficult part of that because as Mars is slowing down to turn retrograde at the very end of Aries as it is stationing, holding its position. It is doing so while in a square to Saturn, in a square aspect to Saturn, which is causing a very extended period of frustration to befall us all, essentially. And so it's like that the entire month. It's it has been like that um, for a significant portion of August. It's like that for all of September, and it will continue to be like that for a significant amount of October. So this is very frustrating because Mars in Aries wants to push forward into the new, wants to take action now, wants to be very impulsive and spontaneous. Saturn in Capricorn says, no, you have to stop. You have to slow down. You have to do it right. You have to do it this way, go through this process or those um, rules or regulations. And so it's this very frustrating uh, stop, go, start, stop energy, however you want to look at it. Now, this is, of course, something that is best worked with. And this is not a time to... Uh, uh, try to push forward <laughs> in this battle of Mars versus Saturn. While Mars is in quite good condition for this fight, Saturn is in even better condition with Pluto and Jupiter there. And so we really want to resist the urge to push forward right now. And instead, we want to continue to discipline ourselves and be as patient as we can and try to do things thoroughly and correctly uh, because that will benefit us in the long run now. Mars extended stay in Aries, I mentioned this last month, but it bears repeating now, is facilitating or really reflecting an extended review of a particular area of our lives. And this does amount to a transformation, ultimately, especially a transformation of that area of our lives. Now, for you specifically, Virgo, uh, this is taking place, this Mars extended stay in Aries in your eighth house of your partner's money, business, and issues of life and death. And so that part of your life is uh, undergoing quite the review and requires more time and patience and presence right now than usual. And so uh, do be aware of that. So what I want you to keep in mind, though, for this uh, September forecast is that as we're going over everything else this month, um, it must be understood and it must be uh, taken into consideration that 
this Mars Saturn square is happening constantly in the background. Everything must be understood within the context of that this much larger, longer cycle that we are in. And by the way, if I didn't mention this already, um, we won't be fully out of this uh, difficult Mars cycle until basically late January slash February of 2021. So without getting into unnecessary details right now, that's basically when we finally see the end of it is, is January and then we're out of it in February. So yeah, this is, this is not going away anytime soon. Now, with all of that said, the first major event we are looking at this month is the full moon on September 2nd at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time. And by the way, all times in this video are in Eastern Time, so adjust your time zone accordingly. Now, this full moon is in Pisces, and so already it's emphasizing um, the contrast between the earthy practical energy of your sign of Virgo with the sun in Virgo, um, where it always travels through this time of year. So uh, happy birthday, by the way, Virgo, for those of you who are who are sun and Virgo people and are celebrating your birthday. Um, but it, this full moon is emphasizing the contrast between that earthy practical Virgo energy and that dreamy, mystical, imaginative uh, Pisces energy with the moon in Pisces. So the, the sort of contrast between fantasy and reality or that which is physical and that which is non-physical, perhaps. Now, of course, Neptune is also co-present with the moon, the full moon in Pisces. And that is the modern ruler of Pisces, and that's adding another emphasis of the dreaminess, the fantasy, the imagination, the spirituality, the supernatural, the non-physical uh, element of all of this. This full moon is also in a very close to exact sextile to Uranus in Taurus. And so in addition to the dreaminess of it all, there's also this added, ele this added element of excitement and anticipation and this electric energy filling the air of like, ooh, what is going to happen? There's something new here. There's something innovative. There's something perhaps even sudden, shocking, or unexpected. Now, for you specifically, Virgo, this full moon in Pisces is uh, occurring in your seventh house of major relationships, and the full moon is where things come to a head, and so you can expect things to come to a head, indeed, this month in the area of your major relationships. And remember, that doesn't just have to be romantic relationships, and it doesn't even have to be just relationships with other people. You can have a major relationship with something in your life that is very important to you. You can have a major relationship with your life purpose itself even, uh, if you want to take it to that level. And so things are coming to a head in that area on or around September 2nd with this full moon. Now, later that same day at 8.19 a.m. Eastern Time, we have Venus opposite Saturn. And so now we have another interesting contrast of energies because, because right around this time of the very dreamy, mystical, imaginative Pisces full moon, we have a very somber, serious Venus-Saturn opposition. So it's going to be interesting to see those two distinct energies playing out at virtually the same time. Now for you, Virgo, this is manifesting specifically as someone or something challenging you in the area of your friends or social group and or your creative self-expression that is requiring you to make a decision and that is involving how you relate to others and or obstacles, limitation, reality, or authority or perhaps even responsibility, and that ends up most likely affecting anything from your beliefs, spirituality, ideals, or that which is foreign to you, to your money or self-image, to uh, your creative self-expression, to your work, health, schedule, or day-to-day -day activities. 
So a lot of interesting possibilities there indeed. Um, I feel like there was one other thing I was going to mention with this. Ah, yes, two other things actually. So as Venus is opposite Saturn here, uh, Venus is also forming a square to Mars, which itself is square to Saturn. And so Venus coming along here at, into this point in Cancer is, in a sense, activating that Mars-Saturn square. And so that is likely adding another element of uh, anger, potentially, um, difficult arguments, things of this nature, uh, frustration that we can't move forward when we want to. Uh, Venus is triggering that Mars-Saturn square as it forms this what is actually a T-square with uh, the already existing Mars-Saturn square. And Venus does this by opposing Saturn and squaring Mars. Now, the good news is Mercury and your sign of Virgo is at the same time applying to a sextile to Venus and a trine to Saturn. And so that could be telling us that a potential way out of the difficulties that we face on or around September 2nd is through communication, Mercury things. That is what Mercury is all about, communication, talking it out. So that is good there, a bit of a, bit of a silver lining on an otherwise very stressful uh, aspect. And Venus is not in the best condition right now, let me also add being in hard aspect to both Mars and Saturn, but the good news is give it another week or so from this point and Venus will move into Leo and thus therefore be in aversion to Saturn and be in a soft aspect to Mars. So at least there's that. Next we have on September 11th at 4.20 p.m. the sun opposite Neptune. So this is again activating that dynamic or that contrast between the earthy practical Virgo energy with the sun in Virgo and the dreamy, mystical, uh, imaginative Pisces energy with Neptune in Pisces. And so that's one very basic and obvious component of this. But more specifically, uh, the way it is manifesting for you, Virgo, is someone or something is again challenging you this time in the area of you personally and or your major relationships and involving your ego or sense of self and or imagination or fantasy or illusion or uh, spirituality and that is requiring you to make a decision of some kind and that most likely ends up affecting how you spend time alone or your enemies and or your major relationships. So that's one that's quite a bit to sort of uh, chew on right there. But in addition to all of that, you know, that's one part of it. But another aspect of this is that at the same time, the sun is also making powerful trines to Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn in Capricorn. And so this is telling us about breakthroughs, the propensity for breakthroughs at this time. And this is going to be generally around the middle of the month of September. And these breakthroughs involve with Jupiter an expansion of one's worldview, with Pluto deep emotional experiences or inner transformation, and with Saturn the... Uh, experiencing of obstacles or limitation or authority or the facing of a difficult reality, perhaps. Now, this Capricorn conglomeration of Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn is in your fifth house of creative self-expression. And so uh, these sort of mid-month breakthroughs will also likely involve uh, not only the sun opposite Neptune things that we just went over, but also your creative self-expression. And uh, fifth house is also love, fun, romance, risk-taking, children, um, anything that you create, basically. So that is what we have there. Next, we have the new moon on September 17th at 7 a.m. Eastern Time in your sign of Virgo. So 
This is a very earthy and practical new moon, with it being indeed in your sign of earthy, practical Virgo. And the new moon represents a new beginning. It is the beginning of the next lunar cycle. And wherever it takes place and the conditions under which it takes place uh, sort of flavors the weeks to come or the month to come, the subsequent lunar cycle that uh, we enter into. And so that is uh, the new moon on one level, but even more so it is made very earthy and practical by the fact that it is in a powerful trine with Saturn, with make it real Saturn, and it's less than half a degree from exactitude. And so with Saturn wanting to bring things into the realm of the physical and this new moon being in a powerful trine with that, uh, with that Saturn, we can also expect that to be a big part of uh, the weeks to come following September 17th. And so for you specifically, Virgo, expect new beginnings in the area of you personally and with the trine to Saturn, quite possibly also involving your fun or your creative self-expression. All right. The final event that we will be looking at this month is uh, on September 24th at 6.47 a.m. Eastern Time when we have Mercury opposite Mars. So uh, right off the bat, this is indeed an aspect of anger, of argument, of conflict, of angry words, things of this nature. But as we dig deeper into it, we see that it is manifesting as someone or something challenging you in the area of your money, your self-image, and or your partner's money, business, or issues of life and death that involves communication or what you write, study, talk, or think about, as well as focused action, motivation, anger, or willpower that requires you to make a decision and that most likely ends up affecting anything or everything from you personally to your career or public image to your partner's money, business, or issues of life and death to uh, your communication, short distance travel, or that which is familiar to you. So quite a bit to chew on there as well, indeed. However, that's still not the end of it. Notice that Mercury, similar to what Venus did earlier this month, is uh, triggering, activating that Mars-Saturn square. Mercury, in opposing Mars, um, well, let's put it this way. Both Mercury and Mars are now square to Saturn at this time. And so, very simply put, that is adding in the difficult Saturnian energy of limitation, obstacles, uh, authority, especially when authority says no or limits us in some way, um, endedness, things not continuing. But when we look at a bit deeper into this, we see that Saturn, what Saturn is doing here is what in medieval astrology is called accepting the management. And when a planet accepts the management, it very often acts as uh, some kind of judge or authority figure or arbiter or mediator between the other planets, and in this case, the opposing parties represented by Mercury and Mars. And so I think, well, that's that on one level, but that is even more likely, I would say, because Saturn already is the authority figure. Saturn already represents that energy. And so it's very probable this month that many of us are going to see some kind of authority figure um, acting as judge or mediator or deciding who gets what between two opposing parties, two opposing people or groups or whatever they happen to be. So uh, I would say be, be aware of that and also know that, again, with Saturn being in Capricorn in your fifth house, expect to quite possibly find this authority figure if you are caught up in this or if people that 
are important to you are caught up in this. Um, expect to find that mediating authority figure or whatever they are in the area of your creative self-expression. And again, fifth house, your fun, um, <clears throat> love, romance, uh, children. Maybe some of you have like adult children and somehow and somehow they will be a mediating uh, figure between two opposing parties, whether that's involving you or involving people that are important to you. Uh, fifth house is also gambling and risk taking for what that's worth. So a yeah, number of interesting possibilities in that area. So that is about it, Virgo. Um, I'm going to try to sum this up for you, though. So the month of September, I'm not going to sugarcoat shit for you, is not an easy month at all. It's definitely more difficult than August. It's uh, very frustrating with that Mars Saturn square, very stressful. Um, now it is true, these squares do always push us into new areas of activity. But uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to get there right away, at least with the Mars Saturn square. In fact, we're, we're not likely to get into those new areas this month, or even even if we do, it's still going to be stressful as hell. I mean, I'm just gonna, again, tell it to you like it is. Um, but I believe it's much better to know what's coming, have an awareness of what the reality is, so that you can deal with it effectively rather than, you know, just hoping or wishing that it could be something else or being completely unaware or expecting things to be normal right now when they are not normal right now. This is highly abnormal energy. I can tell you that from my experience as an astrologer. Um, this kind of stuff with Mars stationing retrograde square to Mars does not normally happen. It's not unprecedented, of course. Nothing in astrology really truly is, but um, it's rare and it's very... It's very stressful. So uh, I feel like there was one other thing I was going to say about that. And now it's now it's escaping me. Uh, that drives me crazy. Um, that's some Mars Saturn square stuff manifesting right there. Um, I guess I'll just say know that this is energy that is best worked with not against, which I think I've already said that, but it bears repeating. Um, and uh, this should not be something that you are just hoping can be done and over with as soon as possible, though it's understandable um, if you would feel that way with, with energy this uh, stressful. So that is my uh, forecast for you, Virgo for the month of September 2020. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe if you're not already, as I'm always creating more content like this. I want to say, despite the wretched astrological configurations this month, I hope that you still have a great month of September indeed, or at least as good of a month as, as you can possibly have under these difficult conditions. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, it's that if maybe I even said this earlier, I'm not sure. But if not, if you are feeling a lot of frustration this month, the good news is you can know that that is um, not an indicator that anything has gone wrong. And instead, it's actually perfectly normal uh, to feel a lot of frustration this month um, and face difficulties. It's not like a sign that uh, your life is necessarily moving in the wrong direction or something like that. Uh, it's literally what I and any other astrologer um, worth the title would expect this month. Um, so you can, you know, if you find yourself in the midst of that, you can at least take some level of solace or comfort in knowing that that that's just the, the astrological weather that we have right now. So anyway, thanks again so much, Virgo, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.